Hello, people on the internet watching videos that are entertaining, I guess. Welcome to this. A TIG welder, which I do not know how to use. Manual TIG welding is often considered the most difficult of all welding processes. Great. If you're new and you'd like to get caught up on the whole reason why I'm doing this today, that V8 swapped 74 Celica is it. I have to custom fabricate my own headers for that car, which means I need to know how to TIG weld. I mean, how hard could it really be, right? So I got TIG and MMA in case you want to watch robots fight. You can switch that over. The machine I will be using is my new Prime Weld TIG 225 welder, which full disclaimer, this is not sponsored by Prime Weld. None of the products I'm using in this video are sponsored. So if the products are terrible, then it's my fault because I'm a shitty welder. <laughs> Step one, argon gas. I got a whole package of these guys. Now these two tackle boxes for robot fish include all of the accoutrements. I can either use a foot pedal or a thumb trigger. I set most of this up this morning off camera just because I didn't want this entire video to be set up of a welder. I wanted to be about my hack job of welding. <laughs> It smells like floor mats. Got my little zinc coated welding station set up because nothing screams I care less about my health than burning zinc. This is how you assemble. Okay. Oh, they are different sizes. Well, I don't know what size I need. According to my tech data, I screw the back of the alien's head into its place. Colette goes inside here. Before I can begin, I gotta sharpen the tip. I actually knew that. I remember seeing someone do that before. I feel smart now. It looks, it looks like dentistry tools. Okay. TIG DC. 2T, because I'm not messing with slopes. That's confusing. Uh, 125 would be right in the middle, so I'm gonna put it in the middle of that. I got pre-flow and post-flow for the gas. Steel 0.4 for pre-flow six for post flow. So the tip needs to protrude two to three tip diameters. One, two, that's about it. Power switch, power switch on. Okay. The next step is gonna be setting the gas flow. So it came with a regulator with the welder and it has a little ball that floats. I gotta press the pedal for this to even to do anything, I believe. Yeah. And it's sets. Uh, about like 17 right now and that's about the same about 17 or so now so I can focus on actually learning how to weld and not constantly messing with my cameras every 30 seconds I acquired an angel food cake Surprise. to help out with the cameras that way I can just weld jeez that's why you can't have nice things <laughs> what happens if I push the pedal nothing what happens if I push the pedal near metal Okay, so it does that. So generally when you learn how to weld, you start with MIG welding or stick welding first, and then you go to TIG. I did start with MIG welding, but I never got really good at it. I would, I'm saying I'm not terrible, I'm functional at it, but I, that doesn't help me. I don't have a MIG welder, I have a TIG welder, and I need to learn how to TIG. Oh no, <laughs> I stuck myself. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I'm gonna be sharpening this thing a lot. Okay. I think I could see how you could make a puddle by doing that though. I just don't want to get that as close. Whoa! Oh, I see what that does. It would be really smart if I actually watched a tutorial on doing this first, but I kind of want to just mess around without anyone showing me what to do. There you go. And just see what things do what when I do certain things. That's like how you learn as a kid. That's how you learn how to walk, just by screwing around with your legs and then somehow you just start doing it. Well, I'm screwing around right now with my legs. I don't, this is, I'm gonna shut up. I know some of you watching right now are probably wondering or leaving comments, why would I not just get one of my friends that does know how to weld to just give me lessons before making a complete idiot of myself on YouTube? I've turned this thing into a welding stick. This guy apart, oh, well, it just pulls out. It would behoove me to grind a couple of these tips. And there's a good reason for it. You want the path of the grind marks to point towards what you're going to be welding. Okay. As much as I'm trying to figure this out on my own when I went next door to sharpen these, uh, Brandon recommended that I get a bigger cup size, 
which I felt was rather unfair to say because I feel a for someone that's five foot eleven. But the largest size I have in my tackle box is a number seven. Is that my chest that's that red? Oh, I need to cover up. I'm gonna try turning my amperage up. Uh, wait a minute, I'm me. It was on 69. That was not intentional, but I'll go with it. As someone that has taken basic instructor courses before and has actually instructed people on the correct ways to do certain procedures when I was in the military, I can attest to the fact that even if you're a subject matter expert at something, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna make a good teacher. Teaching is a complete different skill all in itself. I, I don't wanna call it dimes. I will call it uh, ar generic arcade pennies, but I did my first set. I have a really bad habit of picking this thing up right after I'm done, and I've noticed when I do that, it makes the tip shitty. So I probably need to keep this down like in a little gas bubble. I don't think I have enough stick to do anything. <laughs> and I contaminated my tip. So I have these sticks that have been sitting in the corner of my shop for a while now. Uh, and these are actually for mild steel. I was just using one for stainless, which probably shouldn't have been. How bad is my sunburn? Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> it was like five minutes worth and I'm, I look like a lot lizard. <laughs> what? That was a lot lizard. <laughs> I'm glad you don't know what that is. I'm not gonna turn the amperage up. I wanna see what happens at 69 amps with this huge stick. Oh, this is too much stick. I gotta turn the amps up. This is way too much metal. I need to get used to this massive rod in my <laughs> The result, if I can yield it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here goes. That was way too much, so let me turn it down to like 100. These are my best ones, my last ones, and I've figured out now what happens when you move too fast. It starts to turn black because it doesn't have gas over it anymore, so it starts just bubbling like lava. Angel has never TIG welded either. He has MIG welded. I don't know what you're doing. That's a jig weld. <laughs> <laughs> I figured he should give it a try too, since this will be his first time. You know what I mean? How like the puddle is like just this little silver dot that you gotta look for? Yeah, it's so cold. Jeez, Angel, you got a tiny head. <laughs> I feel like I have to try to stick some metal together. I have two pieces of angle iron. I could make that into a box. I mean, these are pretty clean. There's no rust on them. Ooh, geez. You guys are hard to breathe in there. All right, I'm gonna get a little pack. Ooh, why are you so spattery? What is wrong with the steel? The steel's super, oh, this stuff must be coated in something. Oh, I've been holding the pedal down as I've been using this. No wonder, I was wondering why I could hear gas. This is some thick coating, whatever it is. Now that the pieces are clean, it's going much smoother, not sparking all over the place. Well, it looks terrible. I feel like I need to turn the amperage up a bit. I'm no metallologist, but I actually don't think there was a coating on the steel. I think it was some form of a scale left behind from when these pieces were manufactured. Let me try a, a different tip, because my tip looks a little crappy. Second time around, I feel the penetration was better. <laughs> Why? But <laughs> I was running into an issue with moving too quickly. Oh man. Well, analyzing what I did just based on conversations I've had with people, I think what I'm doing wrong is I'm going too fast in these areas. That's why it's all burnt looking because it doesn't have the gas shielding it as it's dry or cooling. I felt I was doing a better job on the second side of the box. However, I created what is known as common food. And that is if you ever want to find the correct way to do something, simply post doing it incorrectly on the internet and you will find out. So this one, I started off really good I feel, but my hands started getting so hot that I stopped halfway. And then after I started back up again, it slowly started going downhill. I stopped again right here because it was getting too hot, and then this was just a mess. I cleaned it off of the wire wheel so I can get a better look at my mess. And uh, it's just regardless of the fact my technique not very is absolutely trash. So I, I need just to work two on that pieces of metal become one a lot more. The penetration looks good. You could even see it on the other side. 
You're not gonna win an award with this, but for a day's worth of welding? How's your ears? I forgot it was that loud. Even though I definitely could have used a ton more practice on some thicker gauge steel, I wanted to move on to some thinner pieces because that allowed for me to turn the amperage down. Contaminated my tip which because this is not a water-cooled torch, it gets hot super quickly when you're doing thicker pieces of metal with the amperage turned up. And I didn't even have this turned up all the way. It was about halfway in the range that it's capable of going. This I don't even need filler rod for. Look at that, I did that without filler rod. You do realize when you leave a comment in all caps lock, I can't hear your fingers hitting those letters louder. And I'm sure there's plenty of those telling me that I have been doing this backwards the entire video. Power up. Let's do 85, that's a good number. I did watch a couple of videos on YouTube last night, just for the pure visual of it, no sound, just to see people TIG welding so I could pick up on it. Now I'm gonna try to do with those things. Pretty sure this whole box is all stainless steel. I am kind of ambidextrous, but I prefer my right hand. So this feels a little weird. I'll give it a shot. I know what you're thinking. Aluminium doesn't look like stainless steel. It kind of does. They're both silver, but to be fair, these were in a box full of stainless steel and I didn't realize it. And I was wondering why is it turning crazy colors and sparking all weird like it's going into another dimension. Well, that's weird. I think I got the amps too high. I gotta consult my book. Eighth DC amperage, 85. Whoa, that was a good guess. Well, my setting is pretty much the same. In case you were ever wondering what it looks like when you try to weld aluminum in DC with a steel filler rod, now, now you know this is what it looks like. I think this is like... Oh, this isn't stainless steel. Stainless steel. Oh, this is really thin. It's super thin, I gotta turn it way down. As much as it looked like fun to try some thinner stuff, I'm definitely not ready for that. However, I did realize that what it says in the book to use for the amperage was drastically higher than what you could actually use to do such thin metal. But nevertheless, there is a saying that goes around in fabrication, a grinder will make you a welder you're not, I think. But I like to say a camera and editing software will make you a bullshit artist you are. Because I could have very easily filmed this video with an expert welder standing over my shoulder telling me exactly what to do in perfect settings and scenarios to make it look like I'm a good welder and lay a perfect bead. But that's not real life. I wanted to fail and do things on my own and learn the hard way because that's what most of us have to do when we're first learning how to weld unless we go to school specifically for welding. After two full days, more like a day and a half because I spent half of today moving and setting up cameras and editing all these clips that I've shot in the past day and a half because Angel wasn't here today, uh, this is the end result. So here is my progression. Yes, let's look at this first nightmare. I was just testing out my sea legs, trying to figure out how to hold it with my left hand. And then uh, I progressed down here and that actually, I mean, there's something that could constitute a shape. The next piece, if I had to analyze it myself, I would think I was having speed control issues. That's why it looks a little burnt in some areas. And also I was picking up the torch a little too early at the end. The next two are a fairly similar story, the, just that. I started getting proud of myself with this guy. I had really good backside. And the last experiment was just a test with heat. I wanted to see what would happen if you just continuously kept melting a puddle. And then that wasn't terrible. I mean, it kind of started to look like something that, that... they're pretty and terrible. I would not do anything on that car that is useful. I am not going to be fabricating the headers on this car. That's just not going to happen. It's not something I want to half-ass and try to be like, hey, look at I'm an expert on YouTube. If you guys would like a part two to Sarah teaches herself how not to weld, I have to have a minimum of 100,000 views in 24 hours, which should be possible. That happens fairly often on good performing videos on this channel. But 
if that happens, I will do a part two to this. Regardless, I gotta get back to work on this thing and that means I'm gonna start probably with the wiring since I'm actually good at that stuff. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.